Hi guys, Jason with LumaBlade here. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about heat treating high carbon steels. Um, there's so many different high carbon steels. They're actually the easiest to heat treat and recommended for beginners. My high carbon steel of choice that I go to is 1084. Um, it's very easy to heat treat, very easy for home heat treat. I happen to use a heat treat oven, an even heat kiln. But what I wanted to talk to you about is if you do have a kiln, the importance of normalizing your steel. What that does, there's molecules or grain structure, if you will, in your steels, which need to move around a little bit to give you an optimum heat treat. It's three cycles, 1650 degrees with a 10 minute soak. You pull it out of the oven, which I'm gonna do here in a minute or so, as soon as my alarm goes off to show you. You let it cool to black. Once it cools to black, you put it back in and then you drop it 100 degrees to a 1550 with a 10 minute soak. Then you cool that to black. Then you put it in for a 1450 temperature for a period of 10 minutes and you let it cool to black. And then you pull it out and you just let, I mean the last one actually you pull it out and it cools to whatever color it cools. The actual color that it does uh, cool to, just so you know, bear with me one second. Sorry about that, it's my phone people paging me, but uh, this is, if you can see it, this is the color, it, it, it's like a gray. Well, there we go, there it is. I'm gonna try to zoom in on there, get my gloves on. So bear with me. Okay, let me shut this alarm off, the thing's annoying. Now you don't have to rush. That's one thing that you don't want to do. You don't want to rush when you're dealing with a piece of steel that is... Yeah, we'll see if we can get a nice shot of the inside there for you so you can see. Alright. Gloves. Now this, pati this particular knife... Uh, <laughs> you get to see my just torso. But uh, this particular knife here is a hunter knife that I'm working on. But it's coming out, it's cherry red. So this is what we got going here. Let's see if you can see it. Cherry. I mean, it's really red, but if you look at it, you can see that it is cooling. Let me zoom out a little bit. The one man show over here. You can see it's cooling. And as it's cooling, it is changing colors. So it's quickly cooling down to a, a gray. But when you're inside, okay, even though this looks gray, just so you guys know, when you're indoors, it's still red. Okay, I don't want to shake the camera and walk right outside and to shut the lights off in here. Uh, let's see if I can shut the lights out real quick. Just by pulling the plug here. You might be able to see that there's still a red U to it, so that means it's not cooled yet. A lot of guys, when I first started heat treating, I started heat treating in a uh, in just a regular regular uh, a coffee can forge with propane and map gas hooked up to it, and. Um, <clears throat> I only heat treated it at night because you know I went off of the colors and everything like that. Because in the daytime with the light, it really plays tricks on you. Um, again, this is just a this is actually a new project for me. This is a, a classic hidden tang hunter thing. Uh, it's a it's actually a uh, first for me. Um, and again, it's just 1084 steel. It's a great steel to work with. A great beginner steel very forgiving and you'll learn a whole lot with that process so right now it's cooled it's it's not really actually a black as much as it is a uh, a grayish color um like i said depending on the lighting and depending on <laughs> what your color charts are in your eyes is going to tell you what color it is but we're at a gray now so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it back in and remember guys i mean this is not ground yet I grind all my bl blades post heat treat, <coughs> and I'll explain. Excuse me, I'll explain that in another video. 
So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this blade, I'm going to put it back in, <coughs> excuse me, as I have it, blade side up. I'm going to reprogram for 1450, let that run. And the nice thing is, is that since I'm already up to temperature in the oven, it won't take lo as long as you think. Another very, very good practice to get into when you are actually heat treating in an oven. I mean, this is a 220 volt uh, unit here. And I just made a safety mistake and I realized that you gotta shut it off before you go in with tongs and metal because of electric conductivity. Um, I forgot, sorry guys, you know. So I'll I'll reprogram this thing and let's see if uh, for those guys that are thinking about getting one of these, I'll do another um, in-depth review on this. Now this is the uh, kiln from uh, Even Heat, and that's the Ramp Master controller. That is the controller you want. It has like 12 or 13 banks. Uh, my next video, I'm going to do a review on this here. But anyway, all I do is simply, okay, and sometimes it doesn't uh, quite develop. Enter, standby, and I hit develop again. It tells me the program. I'm running on program 11. So I'll just put 11 in again, enter, segments. That's how many stages of heat treat you want. Rate of climb. Now this, 9999 is the fastest way to get up to temperature. That's your ramp. I, I dropped it, I reduced it because I'm annealing. I'm not, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm normalizing. So I want that slow temperature to build. So I reduced that. So I have it at 8888. Okay, this is my 1650, that's my temperature. I'm gonna go to 1550, enter. I'm holding it for a 10 minute soak, enter. And that's my alarm is 9999. So once it reaches the temperature, this is what's nice about the Ramp Master versus the other ones. I'll hit enter, I'll explain that. And then I'll hit run, I hit enter. And you'll hear it, you'll start hearing it clicking. It's telling you that it's running. Okay, so not to make this a long, boring video and mix everything with the even heat and everything, I'm going to do that in a separate video because it's, you know, there's not that much info on YouTube on, on these even heats other than people using them. And I've spent months learning heat treat and learning how to use this thing and on the phone with even heat so I'll, I'll deal with that now um what i'm going to say is back to the normalization process i'm going to continue that process right there pull it out hold it till it till it turns the color back down cools down put it back in i do it one more time and then i'll let it sit overnight i don't have to i can go directly into heat treating so uh for heat treating uh, 1084, there's there's multiple methods. If you uh, stand by for one minute, let me grab my logbook. I'll be back with it. So what I do I work with various and numerous amounts of steels in, in in what I do. I'm always testing, always looking for a better steel. I got to stop looking at the picture of myself and look directly at the lens. I guess it's because I'm not a uh, movie guy or not used to being on camera. So um, anyway, I worked with a number of steels and I'm trying to find my steel that I want to work with. Out of high carbons, I've worked with 1095, 80CRV2, okay, and 1084. And out of all of those, those three, the only three, because I couldn't find any 5160, I think it is, um, the 1084 seems to be the best. I've abused, used, I, I haven't been able to break a knife. I, I, I was able to chop through a big galvanized nail with it, you know, and didn't break prying things. Um, so anyway, what I do, and then I ventured off, I'm doing stainless now. Now I'm, I'm, I'm doing ABL for my kitchen knives. I'm doing, uh, CPM 154 for my folders and D2. I have another friend that's a fledgling life maker that he'll bring his his blades over to me and I'll heat treat them and he uses some different steels. So when I figure out the heat treat and do all the research, I keep basically just a log book 
and I write everything down and keep my notes. I feel that that's a good uh, process to do. I'm rambling, but you know, hey. So uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can heat treat uh, 1084, and I and I've changed it up since I bought a I bought a Rockwell hardness tester, which I'll also do another video on. Um, everyone just uses the old file test. It's you know if the file skates, it's good. Aha, that's not exactly the case. I started using just regular files. Skates, yeah, I'm good to go. All right, I made my first 20 knives in, in that method. Then I earned money and I was able to buy things and you know I bought a proper file file test hardness test kit. Um, when I bought that kit, I thought that was great. Well, here we are again. I got to pull this thing out. Sorry, that was the alarm. I got 10 minutes to go. So anyway, I bought a uh, a 10 minutes so, but I bought a file test kit, a Grizzly. Uh, file test kit and I bought a, a better file test kit because I didn't want to shell out the money for a Rockwell hardness tester. Problem with that is they go in five point increments, 65 HRC, 60, 55, you know, the five points. One point can be the difference between a usable knife and a butter knife. Once I realized that, I said, I got to find a hardness tester. So I found a hardness tester and I went with my original heat treat program and I realized that I was not getting the hardness ratings that I felt that I wanted with 1084. Okay, so you know I had to revamp it. So you know, of course, the first time I heat treated uh, one of my friends, Ecom Knives. Uh, look up his channel. He's got an excellent series on backyard heat treating. That's not what I'm doing here. Um, I'm doing uh, what is with a with professional equipment to help guys to learn how to heat treat certain steels. And we'll start with an easy steel. We're going to start with 1084 because you can heat treat that in your backyard in a homemade coffee can forge. I did it. I did it for like my first 20 knives. My first 20 knives. And you know what? All those knives are still in use today. Everybody loves the knives. I haven't had one complaint. Nothing's broken. And they hold the edge. So, you know, you don't need a, you know, an expensive oven. Um, Okay, so back to 1084. So I brought it to 15. You got to bring it to non-magnetic and all that. I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys know. Um, but I set the oven to 1500 degrees and I soak it for 20 minutes, and then I quench. You could quench in canola oil. I chose to go with a McMaster Car High Speed Quench Oil. Okay. So at that recipe, you know, I wasn't achieving. I was achieving like 50. 7 HRC. It was skating. You know, the 60, the 65 file, you know, I never thought it was going to get 65, but the, you know, 60 file was skating. Because, it, I mean, different areas were hardening differently. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I was having a problem. So then I went and uh, changed my heat treat up to do a whole thing. I did a ton of research, talked, I was, I was on the, you know, internet and forums with professional knife makers who are great guys who are willing to share their knowledge and that's why I want to share my knowledge that I've learned with other people. So anyway, so what I did is I learned that normalization is an extremely important thing and that's what we're doing today, normalization. Um, it moves the grain structure, moves that steel around, gets it a chance to get tighter grain and everything like that which is going to give you a better heat treat. So I do the uh, normalization 1650 cool, 1550 cool, 1450 cool, and then now I'm in the heat treat. Heat treat's relatively easy. I go to 1475 and I hold it for 15 minutes and I quench it. This is what I do differently than others, and it increased my hardness significantly. Um, I quenched it in room temperature, right now, room temperature, but at 75 degree McMaster car, 11 second oil okay and I also you know I tested the hardness of it when I put it in normalized it was 23 HRC okay that's on the seal hardness scale of C scale and post heat treat when it came out of there it was 65 that's what I liked because when I tempered it down I was tempering it down to a 59 60 60 59 so that's that that's what I like so there you go that's that's a good recipe to start with um, I'm gonna do a you know a tutorial on the even heat a review on it I've had it for 
maybe six months um, and I've been working with it nonstop. It's an indispensable tool for me right now. You don't need an oven to heat treat. I'm going to tell you that right now. You know, the, 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 the bladesmith, there's a difference. There's a, there's a maker and there's a bladesmith. The difference is forging, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I don't have the facility to be able to do that. Otherwise, I'd love to do that. Um, and there's the maker who uses different techniques. They did stock removal and forging. So anyway, guys, that's my little, sorry, little long video kind of going all over. I'm new to this, but that's the whole thing with uh, normalization of steel. Okay, the stainless steels, you don't have to normalize anything. Um, this is basically geared to high carbon steels. So stay tuned. I'm going to do a, uh, another video. Um, I'm going to do that on the even heat oven itself. And then I'm going to go through other heat treating processes. This was just kind of the first stage and then uh, different ways that I go about making my knives so all right the next time have a good one